again, YouTube world. Gene with Flinging Dirt coming back with a little bit of a longer video today. We're going to be taking a look at my new to me scooter, as you can see here. I just picked up this 2020 300XC. I've taken it out on a few rides already to shake it down and I've made a few modifications to it since picking it up that I wanted to go over a little bit. When I bought it, it was completely bone stock and I have done a few things since getting it. As you can see here, I've added a rear disc guard, actually moved that from my 450 over, added that EE spark arrester and I don't remember what I was pointing at there maybe my new little handlebar bag and I moved my flags from my 450 over and added the uh, pipe guard that I had picked up a few years ago for a different two stroke which I would strongly recommend you avoid it bends up and turns to complete trash real easy. I also moved over my Fastway foot pegs from my 450 to this bike. And I also moved over my suspension, the shock and the forks, uh, largely because these forks have been updated to the 2021 specs and I have done a cone valve conversion which is a proprietary deal from Alpine XC which I'm very very happy with uh, has incredible hold up and is also very very plush so it was uh, very well put together I've used it on a couple bikes now the big thing that I've done to this bike however is I have added a high compression head from RK Tech as well as a TPI relocation block so it's now throttle body and I picked that up from Pinnet Racing and this was the first ride using that and we'll get into that a little bit in the main video when I'm actually riding and go over how I feel about it but yeah this is the new scooter I still have the 450 and uh, so yeah we're back on a two-stroke
Okay, so that first little section, just want to dissect that a little bit. Um, personally, I, I do feel like it's definitely got more bottom end pull. I'm more easily able to utilize third gear and even bumped it up to fourth a couple times there. Um, yeah, but the real question is, do I like this better than a 450 four stroke? And that is the debate that just seems to torment me constantly. I find myself going back and forth between a 300 and a 450 all the time and really trying to whittle it down to just one bike and decide which one I like the most. And I'm not sure that's going to be possible. I really just kind of think that they each have their uh, advantages and disadvantages. Um, yes, I don't know. But back to the head mod and the throttle body injection relocation, I definitely think this is a better improvement versus the Power Commander. Like I said earlier, I, I don't know that the Power Commander really did much of anything. Um, whereas this, I can actually feel it's, it's got a little more pull in each of the gears and doesn't fall flat as quickly as it did with just the Power Commander or in stock form. Now that also said, there is one more step that could still be taken and that is to have the ECU reflashed by uh, the folks at Pennant Racing who from what I understand actually just used John Ross to do their tunes for them or at least he works with them from what they've told me so at any rate we're going to continue up the trail see how things feel there's a climb up here that I kind of use as my baseline delta comparison climb to see how it feels compared to uh, my 450 or even my previous 2018 300.
So I just did that climb in fourth gear. I mean, it didn't pull hard, but it didn't seem to struggle getting me up either. So, I think that's a good sign. was interesting. I thought it would be better on that, but I don't know. Why? Oh, I'm also playing with this Midwest or Midwest Mountain Engineering clutch lever, which has worked great on other bikes, but I'm having a hell of a time getting it to work properly on this.
hard time getting that clutch to disengage enough to get it in neutral. So here we are at the climb. Um, you can see the trail just goes right up there, right up the mountain. Um, on my previous 300, I was able to pull this in third gear, no problem. After I did a couple of mods to that bike, I had to do a high compression head as well as, uh, oh, well, actually, after I did that, that pretty much took care of most of it. But I did a few other things to that bike. That thing was a beast. And it had no problem climbing this in third gear. And that was a few years ago. Um, since then, I've been on my 450, and that has no problem getting up this hill in third gear. But obviously, it's a 450. So let's give it a shot. See how it feels. Last time I did this, third gear. I mean, I could do it, but I had to feather the crap out of the clutch, which is what I'm hoping to ha have resolved. And I hope I can just it up. You know, maybe you don't have too much. You know, if I make some errors, obviously that's going to affect things as well. But let's see. on my part um, so I ended up having to feather the clutch a couple of times about halfway up um, somebody also made an easier line that transitions into a harder line which is where I made my mistakes um, but that being said once I got back in control of things I was able to uh, accelerate up the hill past that point. Um, so I guess that's a, a successful test. Um, maybe we'll go give it another shot and see how I do. See if I can pull off that climb without the bog bongles, the buggles, bongles, whatever. Maybe I can do that a little cleaner. I did third gear up that whole thing, did not touch the clutch. Um, 
for sure not as good as the 450 but I believe it is on par with my car rated 300 uh, albeit yeah, this bike is more electric feeling this throttle body and even the TPI has a smoother more linear feel to it versus the more raw uncontrolled nature of a carbureted bike um, so maybe it's a little less exciting but it's also easier to control which is a good thing right anyhow let's continue down this trail and continue on this little ride for today Here's another climb that I like like to use as a, a comparison test. Again, same story as before. You know, third gear, how does it do? Does it get does the motor drag down and struggle or does it just hold flat and steady? Or can I actually accelerate a little bit while making the climb? That is, that is the question, and we are about to get an answer. I think we got our answer. This little bad boy had no problem pulling that third. In fact, I had more of a hard time keeping the front wheel down than I did pulling that climb. So that was really nice. Yeah, good stuff. Well done, Pennant Racing. Oh, 
let's give some love to Kelsey at RK Tech as well. Great head. Boy, that sounded terrible. Good job on the head reshape. Man, that doesn't sound great either. So, conclusion here is that I definitely feel like for what I spent, which was roughly $340, I got my money's worth <clears throat> between getting the head reshaped and that injector relocation kit. Totally worth the $340. 40 bucks if anybody's curious now the second question that I'm I've alluded to already is is this better than a 450 XCF and I think that debate's just gonna rage on forever I don't know that you can really honestly answer that because it's probably gonna always depend on the day and the terrain and how you're feeling, both mentally and physically. There's a lot of factors that can't really be addressed. But then again, I don't know. Maybe uh, a 350 four-stroke answers that question. Or maybe a Beta 350RR or the 390RR. I don't know. Maybe the uh, 300XCW is a better solution for this kind of riding. I don't know. I don't have one. I don't have all of those bikes, so I can't answer that question. I know that both the bikes I have, the 18450XCF and this 2020, in their current configurations are both excellent bikes in fact in their stock configurations they're both excellent bikes but the hunt for the one that elusive one my white whale it continues to burn in me anyhow Enough of that. You all have a great one. I hope you're having an awesome day, an awesome week, an awesome life, and I hope you get out on some awesome rides. Take care and click like. Please subscribe and peace out.